Howdy, uh, howdy folks, I'm Duncan Dover, and welcome to this special edition of Bionicle. So, I'll be setting up with the different Bionicle characters that you see in the box, and there, I'll be doing who they are and what they are. And first up on the list is my redesign of the Toa Nuva. This is the Toa Remnant, with members such as Tahu, Kapoko, Liwa, Gali, Onua, Pahat, Pahatu, Onua, and Takanuva. Their story is, is that after being transported to the world of Remnant, the effects of Remnant began to affect the Toanuva, upgrading them into more somewhat organic. Now having not only their elemental powers, but also having their assemblies. So Tahu here is a lot more square and shorter. Uh, not only is he able to control all forms of fire, but he's also able to absorb fire and control lava. Liwa is a dual tower. Uh, all of them are dual tower. So Tahu is of fire and earth. Liwa is jungle and wind. Kopoka is ice and sound. Gali is water and sonics. Onu uh, Pahatu is stone and... Magnetism, Onua is Earth and Gravity, and Takanuva is Light and Shadow. Um, and their weapons are Tahu has the uh, Magma Saber, Kopoka has the Ice Shield and the uh, what a, uh, and an Ice Sword, Liwa has the Dual um, Scythe Axe, Gali has the Water Plank, Onua Pahatu has a Crystal, uh, has a Magma Dagger, which is Form and a Shield. Onua has the Earth Breakers, and Takanuva has the Crystalline Staff and the Crystal Shield. So, yep, that is that. Now moving on to the next one. And now for the next two, we have Raven, a Wyvern Bird, and Toadunkin, a Reform. Now, I'm not going to be talking much about Raven for this, but Toadunkin, for those of you who do not know, is a former weight is myself, but is a Wayland Yutani escapist. After escaping with a z two xenomorph human hybrids named Eve and Kara, a tiger hybrid named Molly, and a Hydra hybrid named Jake, the group of the five of them crash landed in their escape shuttles on Matanui, where they were found by the Toa Nuva. Duncan's form was that of a dragon, but as time continued on, his colours went from silver to red, black, well, to red and black and dark grey, more reminiscent of Makuta Duncan. Later found out by Makuta Duncan when he captured all five of them and experimented on them that Toa Duncan shield, shared, not shield, shared some of the same DNA as Makuta Duncan himself, as well as two dragons. That would later become out as Blazehorn and Flame. Duncan would eventually um, become upgraded from this form into Duncan the Colossian, a much larger, more docile form, when his beast DNA began to affect his human DNA quite a bit. More on that later. Next up, we have Omega Kong, who is obviously based off the Dr. Steel um, combiner between the different, between Coulter and uh, two different ones, and Lieutenant. Omegacon here is a, this is a representation of Omegacon, uh, who was the creator's adoptive son, and Lieutenant is Hell Battle Drone number 7. There's not much I can say about this because the, the design from this came from Dr. Um, Scorpion here on YouTube, who does Bioformers. Um, and this one was quite a bit of fun, but unfortunately I can't decombine them because a lot of the parts we don't have anymore. And there's just Lieutenant. Yeah, on to the next lot. Up next, we have the Dra some members of the Draxon family. Here we have Draxon, the father of Makuta Duncan, who is the father of Rachel and Daniel. We'll start on Draxon. Draxon is the um, great spirit of creation and destruction, and is the father of Makuta Duncan. Uh, the weapon he is currently wielding is the Dark Longsword, which was his weapon that he used during the Creation Wars. Uh, he was killed, along with his wife, uh, Grace, um, when they had settled down to start a family. Uh, he was killed by his jealous brothers, um, 
Tyrod X and Martin Wee, who didn't like him because he had a lot more responsibility. Martin Wee eventually took over the role of creation, whilst Tyrod X took over the role of destruction. Makuta Duncan, the youngest of his four siblings, mm. armed with the mask of Shadow Time, started out life as Jake, the smallest Glatorian, and was later upgraded to the Titan uh, Tall Makuta Duncan, later becoming Alpha Makuta Duncan, then Omega Makuta Duncan, and now in his current form, um, which is just that. Tom Makuta Duncan takes a lot of inspiration from his design from um, Japanese samurai of feudal Japan. Mm -hmm. Even armed with the dark longsword, what is not pictured is his photon cannon, which he still uses. Um, yeah, so that's about it. Thank you, Ka. Uh And his two children, which he had with his second wife, Haleen, are Tol Rachel, Tol Sonics. And told Daniel, Toa of Ice. Both because they're Toa Makuta hybrid. Oh, well, they've got a lot of problems and a lot to overcome. Rachel loves her father and loves the history of her family, whilst Daniel does not particularly enjoy his father. But, over the time, has gotten used to the fact that his father is none other than Makuta Duncan. Yeah. So there you go. He is, by the way, my tallest mock. And yeah. Up next, we've got basically random. Uh, you will. So we've got Delta, former uh, Order of Matanui agent. White Rhino, Hero Factory. Scrapper, Hero Factory. And Spider Tour. Now, Spider Tour is a Five Nights at Freddy's uh, designed character. Uh, he is min He's one of my representations for one of the many characters in Five Nights at Freddy's Sister Location, or my version of it called Sinister Location. We will not be talking about him. Delta. Now he's interesting, because on this side of him, he has the Mask of Translation, which is Nakama's mask. That is not actually meant to be there to represent Nakama, it's actually representing a deceased boyfriend of Delta's, who was murdered. Delta is a member of Britaka's race, and thus, is one of the last few members to have a fully functioning and working omelette. He joined on with the Order of Matanui quite early on in its creation. But unlike Ritaka, who was guarding the... Pardon me. Mask of Life on Voyanui, Delta was actually sent out to keep an eye out on events that went would possibly go bad. He was actually the first member to inform them, inform the Order of Matanui, of the League of Six Kingdoms. At some unnamed point after his boyfriend was murdered, Delza went and tried to hunt down the man who was responsible for it, resulting in his right arm being cut off at the elbow after being quite badly damaged. Taking the blade that was of his boyfriend and combining it with his axe, which is unfortunately broken at the moment, I will be building a better weapon for him, Delta returned back to active service within the Order of Matanui. At the time of Makuta Tiradex's takeover of Spiris Magna, Delta still served the Order of Matanui, but later went out to go see if he could find other members, other people to find it. He is largely responsible for getting Makuta Duncan and the splinter faction of the Brotherhood of Makuta to fight against it. After that, and after Halrix began to obsess about trying to destroy Makuta Duncan's life, Delta and a select few members of the Order of Matanui left. As a result, he quickly became a bounty hunter. As you can see, he does have the... Cool, I'll pick that up later. The Paraka light-up eyes. Delta also suffered a slight mutation due to the pet, which resulted in him needing... Uh, breathing apparatuses to breathe a lot better. Delta later left the, after leaving the Order of Mutton, we would have later team up with Makuta Duncan on Earth, forming quite good friendship with a mutant from New Zealand named Slasher. Delta says the Order of Draxon and actually was one of the many faction members uh, to return to Spherus Magna to try and convince more people to remove Halrix and her puppet government, which was Otop and Mydek, from power.
Unfortunately, that failed and resulted in the Spherus Magnian Order War, which resulted in eight Order of Drakes on when. White Rhino and Scrapper are two Hero Factory heroes of mine. Uh, Scrapper is actually using quite a majority of knockoff parts. Pardon me. Created to utilize the more beast upgrades of uh, Makoro City. White Rhino is a new hero. As a rookie, she uh, often was the one that was trained by Dun Tol Duncan Nuva. Um, Scrapper is an older, more gr greyer uh, hero who utilizes a lot of his fighting styles to be upgraded. Now, previous incarnations of Scrapper had him with no helmet. After teaming up with Preston Stormer, William Thurno, and Duncan Bulk, Scrapper and White Rhino were both sent on a mission which resulted in Scrapper being quite badly injured, meaning that Scrapper needed to be upgraded into a 3.0 body. During the breakout event, Scrapper actually did hunt down quite a few, uh, hunted down the hero, the villain, Witch Doctor, alongside White Rhino. It is unknown who the other two members of their team is, although many people speculate that it is the surviving members, uh, Edward Breeze, and one other unnamed hero. So there you go, that's, um, uh, unknown ones, and now we're moving on to, uh, the next lot of randoms. Uh, the next group, we have Tol Makuta Brennan in the back there, Tol Maxios, and Tol Dunganuva. Tol, uh, well, Makuta Brennan is an unnamed, is an unknown, uh, person. Some say he was with the Order even before Makuta Duncan. He quickly would form uh, a quite close friendship with the Makuta as both of them quite enjoyed experimenting. When Ranjuna and Makuta Duncan quickly found out that something was up with Teradex, Makuta Brendan and one other named Makuta, Phantom, was the one who convinced Makuta Duncan to actually go through Makuta Teradex's quarters. There they found the plans that Teradex had. And uh, quickly, Makuta told Makuta Brennan, oh, uh, well, Makuta Brennan was the one who organized Makuta into leaving Sir, uh, Distrial. Toa Maxius is the surviving, the last and only surviving member of Makuta Duncan's Haga team, of which the Maxius, Maxilus robots are based off. Uh, he is actually going to be redesigned at some point. He would later join Toa Rachel's team, at which... He was at the house when the Dark Hunters attacked. Todd Ankanuva is the former deputy of the now disbanded Toa Nera. And with the last four, three other surviving members, Toa Sorry. Toa Mineri, Toa Inaxa, and Toa Toyot, not Toyot, Sarizro. It's either Sarizro and Torino, I think it's Torino. We'll keep it Torino. Uh, Torino, I mean. They live in Makoro City. Duncan Uber does not like it, and has in fact twice run away. His armor has changed from his red, from the red that it once had, to white and black and silver. As a result of him no longer being able to control any aspect of his elements. That being fire and plasma. Tol Duncanuva still wields his uh, Spear of Fire, but also has modifications that have long since been no longer of use of a bioforming form. Tol, Tol Duncanuva is also the, one of the only hero Toa to not wear a Hero Factory symbol. Basically, he states it, I don't like them, way but I dawned my armor was shit. Yeah, Duncan Hoover's a bit of an angsty, angsty boy. Anyway, on to the next group. We don't have too much left. We've actually got, what, uh, just a few more mocks left. So, who are these fine individuals? Well, say hello to Sharktooth, Vizorak Torong, uh, Torvok, I mean, Dracoon, and Zuishin. We'll do Zuishin and Sharktooth later. Vizorak uh, Torvok is a creation by Makuta Duncan that is of the Vizorak Horde. Unlike most Vizorak, he doesn't have a, a Rodaka spinner. In fact, Makuta Duncan bred them without it. Instead, the area offers extra armor. As a result, the bites of a Torvok are more than enough to dislocate to sever limbs 
off of Matoran and Tawa alike. The only recorded instances of a Torvok actually killing someone is when the Dark Hunters attacked Xeno Nui. And Makuta Duncan had a few of them, a few eggs with them. These eggs hatched and were quickly used to form a hive, in which one of these decapitated a Dark Hunter that had tried to attack a young Tawa Ra a young Matoran, Rachel. Dracoon. The quote unquote fabled brother of Inrak. The Skakti Warlord of Fear. He stands at 22 foot tall, although in this he's actually pretty small. Armed with the Hellbard of Chaos, a weapon forged by Makuta Duncan, and an ice scythe, the Raccoon rules with fear, even taking over real world countries such as New Zealand at one stage. Dracoon, however, is methodic with his way of doing things. When questioned by Maidak why he was actually helping the uh, Toa um, by the name of, I can't remember her name, of Magic, to clear her people's names, it was because there was more than needs to be met him. After Maidak's death at the hands of a good Duncan, Dracoon was very unsympathetic, stating that Maidak got what Maidak was asking for. He works for himself and only himself, even going to far lengths to even battle Makuta Duncan when Makuta Duncan tried to take back New Zealand back from him, and him losing. I'll leave you to figure out which one I'm referring to. Sharktooth and Zushin. We'll start with Sharktooth. Sharktooth is the leader of the Neo Baraki, of which Zushin is a member of. The Neo Baraki are six new Baraki warlords each with a more monstrous form. Zoishin is a mutated shark. Uh, not Zoishin, shark tooth. As a result, he has razor sharp spines go, that jut out and go down his back, resulting in his sick, twisted, four-armed form. As a result, he loves to chase and torment and kill. Unfortunately for him, well, fortunately for him, he eventually was later found by Prydak and the other Baraki, in which they were recruited, turning the League of Six Kingdoms into the League of Twelve. And like the Toa Remnant I showed before, Sharktooth and Zoishin both end up in Remnant at a later stage. Zoishin is a former human Chinese man. In an alternate version in which World War I was a lot more bloody and China actually fought on the side of the Central Powers, Zoishin was an unnamed soldier. By the way, little easter egg. Zoishin is just my name in Chinese. After being captured and thrown into the pit for an unnamed crime, Zoishin was modified into a very large, four-armed, crab-like creature. His legendary rifle was also upgraded to fire a bullet-shaped protodermis round, able to penetrate armor. He was often at odds with Sharktooth, Sharktooth, forming quite a close friendship with the Baraki known as Titan and the Baraki squid creature known as Toxic. Like the other two, he would end up in Remnant and would actually die when fighting Melpin. So, yeah, he does get revived later, and so that's the solution. On to the next group. On to the next two groups. And here we are, up to the second to last group. This is my G2 mox, and unlike Generation 1, there aren't, aren't, isn't that many. I could have put a Hero Factory here, but I decided against it. What is not pictured is any Star Wars CBS characters, as I only have one. Well, I used to have two. So, the Darth Vader model. So, from left to right, we have Tol Makuta Duncan, Tol Makuta Brennan, Makuta uh, Runjuna, Villager Runjuna, with the wrong helmet. Villager Draxon, and Draxon and Indef. United Draxon with Indef. So I'll start with the two Tolman Makutas. The youngest of the two Tolman Makutas, as they were created by the unnamed Forgers before Ikimu's time. Also, he's not present. Uh, Tolman Makuta Duncan and Tolman Makuta Brennan were both dual Toa. They had one element and another element. Makuta Duncan had energy and fire. Whilst Makuta Brennan 
had magnetism and air. They were both tasked with guarding a relic known as the Chalice of Reversal. Its power would let any its user be able to transfer the time, would be able to transfer events differently. For instance, if one were to get a hold of the Chalice, they'd be able to reverse the effects of the Toa Oka, Otaku, or the Toa who arrived on the Isle of Otaku. Which is where Makuta, where's, which is where Rinjuna comes in. First of all, we'll start with Matoran. A villager of Earth. He was best friends with a villager of water named Trinity, who I don't have, and a villager of stone named Draxon. At some point unnamed, he lost his Earth mask and replaced it with a white mask from the Ice Village of a deceased villager. Later, he was upgraded by the powers of Makuta, the evil brother of... Um... Ekimo to get the chalice of reversal from the Toa Makuta, in which he did so quite effectively, almost climbing it before he was beat and stopped by his two villager friends, who were still villagers. Ranjuna, who was sick of Toa this and Toa that, stated to his former friends, well, to his friends, that if they did not run along, he would be forced to kill them. Armed with this, with a crystalline, with the, the staff of, Chaos and the and the, an energy launcher here. Draxel and Trinity were later beaten by Ranjuna, who was beaten by the Total Makuta, and both of them were walking outside the cave when they were both hit by red lightning, transforming them into the uniters. Trinity, a uniter of water, while Draxel became a uniter of stone. They quickly found two new uniter beasts. The flying scorpion, known as In Death, and the swimming Drake. Both used these powers and would often fight Ranjuna as the new Toa, often operating away from to the other Toa. They did have many run ins with the Toa, but they left it to basically be on their own. Now to the law. And now for the last group, we have the Deathsaurus. From Zoids and me. Well, there, there's a reason why I feel this. So the Death Source, for those of you who do not know, um, is of course the main antagonist for Zoids, Chaotic Century and New Century and Guardian Force. I mean, not New Century, as well as the main antagonist for the Zoid versus video games. I built this one out of parts from the Crystal Beast, Darth Vader, CBS, and the Rakshi, or the Black Rakshi up here. And I think he came out really well done. As for this handsome fella, this is me. Um, as a way to represent myself online, I thought I'd create a mock uh, to represent me. I wasn't going to use Makuta Duncan, and I wasn't going to use... Um, anyone else because frankly no one needed to know who the hell I am no one needs to know what the hell I am so I'll be using this for TikTok I'll be using this for YouTube um until I'm at a point where I'm comfortable to show my face in the past I've tried to uh, and there was a video a uh, picture of me that was on the internet but I got rid of it uh mainly because I didn't want it anymore so um yeah so that has been basically all of my mocks from Generation 2 to Generation 1 to CBS and others. I'm Duncan Dooper, and I say thank you so much for watching this video and taking the time out of your day. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Also, share this along with your friends if you want to turn up. And hit that little notification bell. I'm Duncan Dooper, seeing you on Spirion, and I'll catch you next time. Bye!